So, um, I'll, I'll actually keep my talk uh, very short um, anyway, because we're running out of time. But uh, really, what, what I want to talk about today is uh, using balloons to test CubeSat subsystems. Um, I was going to show a few pictures of, uh, um, of missions that we've done here at UNSW. So beside the QB50 project and the CubeSat uh, um, uh, work that we do, well, one thing we've been doing, this is a, a work that, uh, idea that originated with the ASRP, somebody mentioned the ASRP before, um, back in 2011, as a way of, as an intermediate way to space. So we've seen this, uh, this approach by many people, including uh, the guys in South Australia, so um, Flavia, you probably have heard of Flavia and uh, Fleet. So initially they were doing um, uh, balloon launches. We, we had the same idea to, to involve students, but this idea has evolved into, um, if we look at space, if we look at uh, high altitude balloons, uh, some of the graphs I was going to show you are 99% of the atmosphere is below about 30 kilometers. So you get, up to, you get up to 30 kilometers and you're practically in vacuum. The other thing that uh, we have is that there's a lot of, um, there's quite a bit of thermal cycling that we go through it, uh, as we rise up um, through the, the, the layers, well, uh, the altitudes. So the idea is that if we're going to, um, Xiao Feng has mentioned uh, uh, putting his uh, dos dosimeter on, on the balloon and sending it up. If we're going to um, test uh, CubeSat subsystems on uh, high altitude balloons, and I, uh, you know, our belief is that this will give us a much cheaper, well it, it, it does give us a much cheaper uh, alternative to, to get in some real data and balloon at 30 kilometers, you know, you, you can cover a, a radius of, um, of 500 kilometers so you've got, you've got the visibility to do, um, um, you can see if my, my internet is working. So um, it, it does give us the ability to do, to do communication tests. It gives us the ability to do um, power system tests. It gives us uh, the ability to do attitude determination control. I asked about the attitude determination control. The balloon that you see here is a vastly different class of balloons than, than what we're talking about. But if you think about it, we, so the balloons that we've been launching are um, uh, light balloons. <coughs> The classes are below four kilograms of payload is a, is a light balloon. A CubeSat, a two-unit CubeSat, is a, is a couple of kilograms. So you can easily put, take a two-unit CubeSat, put it on a balloon, send it up, do all the tests that you want, and the beauty about it is that you can actually recover it and look at your systems, how they've, they've fared with the, um, uh, you know, the temperature changes and, and, uh, and vacuum. So this is the idea that uh, we've, been, um, uh, we've been driving uh, towards. So the presentation, I'll put the slides uh, online, um, but the, the presentation ba j basically just talks a little bit about the details of, of, uh, of doing that, of, of carrying a, a, a balloon mission. Uh, another thing that, uh, uh, that basically has happened is that, uh, you know, beside doing tests on, on uh, CubeSat subsystems, the experiments that you might do in space, you can also do on a balloon. So we've got a reflectometry experiment for uh, in uh, in our QB50 system. We can fly the reflect reflectometry um, subsystem and actually collect data. That's an intermediate uh, step. Um, we've just received uh, NATO funding to um, uh, put a, a radar, a, a synthetic aperture radar, on a balloon and fly it to uh, to 30, 40 kilometers as well. So I think there's a it, you know, balloons can really complement uh, uh, satellites, CubeSats, and it's something that uh, I think, you know, we're, you know, we're open to collaboration, we're open to, to talking to people interested in taking their subsystems and putting them on a balloon. We can actually do the launches. We've, we've, had the, we've done the proof of concept missions, we've established our capability, and, you know, we're able to recover the balloon successfully. I think I'll end it there. Yeah. Just one quick question. How do you do your, um, your ground track in terms of your columns? Do you, do you have a, a mobile truck with an antenna that follows it along? Or? So basically, uh, yes, with, our, with us in the car, we've got a, um, 
for the tracking to recover the, the, the balloon, um, we basically just have an antenna on the roof of the car. Mm -hmm. And we've got somebody sitting in the, in the back of the car. And you know, we get live updates. We've got a bunch of systems. Um, some of the guys here sm would smile because they, they know what's uh, uh, going on. It, so the, the, the group of students that uh, are really involved in this and driving this is uh, the Blue Side guys. Um, we've got uh, uh, an APRS um, to, to get the position updates. Uh, we've got a GPS on board and we've got a beacon. So, yeah, we're able to recover the balloon. Yeah. So, for your radar system, you need an active point. For? For the radar? Yes, that's a, that's a project that is just starting. We, we just received the, the funding a month ago. So, but this is why I asked about the, uh, the pointing. Yep. Any other question? Okay. I think I'll let everybody have their morning, uh, their afternoon tea. Okay. Thank you very much. And thank you all. For I'd like you all to be back here ten minutes ago.